Hey Internet, I'm Rob from Nanome, and we're here with another episode of Molecule of the Month. So this month, we're looking at biomineralization proteins. Hold up, what's a biomineral? Any kind of hard, inorganic compound created by a living organism can be considered a biomineral. For example, bones or eggshells. How do these things get made and what's the difference between them? It turns out it's about the proteins that make them and that hold them together. Let's hop into VR and check it out. All right, so today we're looking at two minerals. One is called hydroxyapatite, and it's a major constituent of bones. The other is called magnetite, and it's what allows birds to sense magnetic fields. So here we have hydroxyapatite in complex with osteocalcin. Osteocalcin is this protein, this white protein that you can see here, and hydroxyapatite is the crystal lattice. So hydroxyapatite is this calcium phosphorus oxygen-based lattice. Bones are made out of, of collagen, and hydroxyapatite in large part. And this mineral gives your bones this, the strength they need to let you stand up to not break. So let's take a look at these two separately and see how they might merge together. Here's the hydroxyapatite, and here is the osteocalcin protein separately. And we can see here these yellow atoms on the bottom indicate these regions on the protein that have high negative charge and coordinate uh, very precisely to the locations of calcium ions in the hydroxyapatite lattice. Here we have magnetochrome, a protein that builds perfect crystals of iron oxide known as magnetite. And this is insane. This mineral is used in birds, bacteria, and other life forms to detect Earth's magnetic field. And this protein is what enables them to build this mineral. So let's take a look at the lattice and the protein separately. So here we have the magnetite lattice. It's made up of iron oxide and these elements together enable the, this lattice to be sensitive to Earth's magnetic fields. So now we're in the magnetochrome and as we can see, magnetochrome has four heme ligands, which are these iron containing molecules, which help with electron transport in the assembly process of the magnetite crystal. So this is what enables magnetochrome to be, to make these perfect iron oxide crystals, which is an incredible feat for some organic compound like this. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. So I've got big news for you. We have a huge update coming with menu overhauls, brand new tools, and much, much more. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And as always, stay tuned for next month's Molecule of the Month. What blows me away about making these Molecule of the Month videos and articles is how quickly I kind of run into the boundary of research and human knowledge. When I dig in further into like, for example, hydroxyapatite nucleation, like how are these crystals actually formed? There's really just not that much like concrete knowledge about exactly the mechanisms of these things. So. It takes. I spent hours trying to chase down these, uh, chase down these, basically different research papers and figure out how exactly these things happen. And it's pretty inspiring for me to have the chance to, like, actually run into the frontiers of our knowledge about different parts of our bodies, different molecules, and understanding how these things fit together. So osteocalcin uh, is one of the focuses of this article. This this protein right here that binds to calcium ions in hydroxyapatite. And I looked up tens of articles about osteocalcin and, and how it works and what its roles are. And people are still figuring out how osteocalcin works and what it does in the body even now. Like researchers are, it's osteocalcin and the biology of osteocalcin is an active area of research. So I'm running into like dead ends and papers where we're like, oh, like, here's what we think it does and here are some proposed mechanisms of it, but we're still figuring it out. So for ex I was trying to figure out exactly what osteocalcin does uh, in terms of um, like binding to hydroxyapatite crystals. Is it like, does it inhibit the deg degradation of the crystals? Does it enable easier collagen binding? Like, what does it exactly do? And there's not like a concrete, clear answer about like, what it exactly does. Like, there's not some Wikipedia page where the 
the like the known answer is. So it's pretty cool for me to chase down these um, these different molecules and mechanisms to figure out how they work, and then to share that knowledge with you guys on Molecule of the Month.